Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and it's an alpha day because we're playing, well, I'm not playing, Jamie is playing with the Alpha 145. I have finally given up, admitted defeat, got fed up with the niggly stuff that was stopping this thing getting MOT. So I've had the thing shipped over to Go Italia, where he's going to do the last couple of jobs that need to be done for the MOT. So we're going to sort out these rear flexies which have gone weird in the middle, the, the weird middle flexies. We're going to sort out the headlamp aim because that's pointing in the wrong direction and we're going to sort out one last thing which I've forgotten. What else are we doing, Jamie? Uh, well, the three flexies. Flexies. Uh, I'll tell you exactly. Washers, light aim, CV oh, yeah. boot and exhaust Yeah, that's right, yeah. So oh, the exhaust thing might be done. Headlight, oh, yeah. Cross that one off. Headlight aim, because I can't even find the adjusters. We can unplug them, point their lights in the right direction, because we never carry heavy stuff. Don't need that. The shonky CV boot needs to be replaced, which would be an easy job with the right tools. Exhaust leak, I've put the terrible bungy goo up stuff on, so that hopefully will sort that out. And then the windscreen washer pump, which I've brought along with me, having bought it off Amazon. So hopefully by the end of today, this car will be ready for an MOT. I can drive it away having let the dirty work be done by someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> Jamie, have you got to do it? I don't know, so it should be here any minute now. <laughs> yeah, I don't get my hands dirty anymore. <laughs> I wish. These uh, shocks and springs don't look too clever. I think the only solution there would be a set of coilovers really, wouldn't it? Is that actually undoing? It is, and it's not spinning, it's not tearing the pipe. Oh my God, that is, I'm gonna call that a win for Bulldog BDX because that's been marinating in that for about two weeks. And that was an absolute pig. I'd run out of tools on that. Oh, really? <laughs> I tried everything to get that undone. What's the other end look like of that? Also, this is where we're oh, that mangled. Right oh, cutting off, cutting off, doesn't matter then. Yeah. That's all right then. Well, if you don't come on, I'll just slip it off. Yeah. Hmm? You were the source of so much trouble, you so and so. Don't deserve to be on a car anymore. Right, now we can crack on. Get some new pipes in that. Here we go, one side done. New flexi hose just there. New bit of hardline, heat shrunk in place. This one which wouldn't come off also changed. So three quarters of the car finished, hurrah. Excellent, so now we have got original pipe remaining undisturbed, new flexi in place, new bit of hardline with heat shrink around it. So yeah, all good in the hood. Now just onto the front of the car. Headlights, windscreen washers, CV. Then maybe we can drive this thing out of here. Oh, I need to bleed the brakes as well. It's always something. So I just checked back in with Jamie to see how things are going and he was just about to bleed the brakes up and discovered another hole in the system. A bit of a hard line further back into the system just blew out after uh, adding pressure to it. So I'm glad he was doing this here, not me trying to do it by hand at home because I wouldn't have found that until I pushed the pedal. So there we go, a little crack in it, tiny little rust crack. It was all hidden up behind the heat shields and the baffles and stuff, so you couldn't see it at all. It wasn't until a bit of pressure from the... Um, and that was about to go as well. So this is all well and truly... Oh, and there as well, okay, yeah. So this is completely knackered. Very lucky we found this up here on the ramp, rather than on the road somewhere. Right, sounds like we've got pressure and nothing's falling out of the car this time, so that's a massive improvement. This is the state of the old fluid, which is... Oh, looking everywhere. Not as bad as I thought it might be, a bit watery, a bit gunky. Could have been worse. I've seen a lot of worse come out. It's a bit cloudy. It's a bit cloudy, but yeah. But much better now though, so we've got functioning brakes at last, which is a massive relief. This is quite interesting, in the CV boot, which is what's found this one, you can actually undo these little bolts here to release the uh, drive shaft. So naturally, the undo those six bolts, twizzle the thingy and it all comes apart didn't work in this particular case, so we're going to do some more additional dismantling. Uh, lovely rounded nut, so this gets more fun. This is why sometimes I let other people do the work. Phew. It's off. After much hammering, swearing, penetrating oil, it's free! 
bill, free-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be talking that way. So I will be ordering a couple of new ones of these things at some point very soon to replace these, because they've been mullered in the past. And there we have the free as a bird drive shaft and knackered CV boot. And you said this would be easy. They're not weird when they don't fall. Come on, like that one's just about though. <laughs> Finally. Lovely. Some really disgusting old grease there. And off comes the old one in the bin. That's actually part of the old thing, isn't it? Was that, yes, what's left of the, <laughs> what? attached to the drive shaft. The amazing thing about CV grease is it's actually just as disgusting going in as it is coming out. It just doesn't smell quite as bad. Disgusting little axle going back in, not gooey anymore, not disgusting. And it's worth saying that Jamie did say that's a really easy job, you can do it on the jack, it's only six bolts. <laughs> when it's new. When it's new, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, I, I'm glad we did it on the ramp, not on the, uh, on the jack. Oh, that's turning. No, but it's literally just spinning on itself. Yeah, that's oh yeah, that's turning. It's actually going up. It's crossed off, that's crossed off, we can cross that off, cross that off. Hopefully we can cross this off, we'll find out in a second if we actually can cross this off. Is the ignition on? Ready? Come on, pump water. It's buzzing, it's just not, it's not sucking. Right, it looks like the aftermarket one has got the pipes the wrong way around on it. So, oh, just that water, glass squeaking. Oh, it's slowing down like it's sucking. Ah, oh, it's working. The water is dribbling up onto the glass at last. Right. That's how it works then, excellent. Well, it is good news again. Good news times, I've, I've lost count now, yet another MOT pass stacks up and adds to the list. So the Alpha is now road legal and buzzing around the county's roads in a fully legal manner. We did get an advisory for a slight blow on the exhaust still. So the uh, gun gum repair hasn't been 100% successful, but it's 99.9 .9 good enough that it's not a serious issue. And uh, yeah, the MOT tester wasn't overly concerned about that being a problem but I am looking at changing this entire exhaust system for a new custom made one because this one is just really weird the exhaust hangers seem to be kind of in the wrong place so it doesn't really hang properly it keeps on snapping exhaust hangers so I've put a couple more fresh exhaust hangers on there now because that was also kind of drooping low again at the back as it always is uh, so yeah one more thing to fix at a future date but the car is now legal now I'm so glad I did take this down to Go Italia because everything that should have been a relatively easy job turned out to be an absolute nightmare on this car the Bulldog did finally release the previously frozen and frosted solid uh, brake flexes um, but the one that I've been attacking prior to that had it was just completely mangled by my efforts and the fact it was completely rock rusted solid but of course we also found that blown cracked hardline which I wouldn't have found until it was too late had I been doing it on the floor so very relieved it happened in the workshop on a four post lift rather than on the road or just on a, on a jack then had to change more brake hardline on the floor no fun everything put up a fight the CV boot put up a massive fight as well there were rounded off bolts that we had to contend with there so I need to go and order some new pinch bolts to replace them we put them back but haven't been off and on again that won't be such a hard effort to do in the future what else was difficult oh yeah the um, I've had to cut back what I've shown you in the edit because the radio is playing in the background and there's copyright music so Changing the headlight aim was a massive pain because the headlamp adjuster wheels had kind of broken and so I had to get in there with a pair of long nose pliers and manually turn the gearing inside the headlamp unit basically. So that was all good fun, but that's now pointing the right way. And in addition to that, I actually won a competition, a Facebook um, just 
reshare and, and like kind of competition. Got a new set of Osram Nightbreakers uh, from from power bulbs. So very excited about that, which is nice. Another improvement. The car keeps on getting better as they always do. Oh, um, finally, the windscreen washers. It was only the windscreen washer motor that had blown. Um, but getting the old one out was an absolute pig. It was, well, 20 something years of, of stuck. It's basically only a push fit item and you have to wiggle it out, but it did not want to be wiggled. It was very unhappy about that wiggling. And uh, when it went back in again, we unstuck the rubber grommet that it sticks into and the new grommet that it comes into didn't fit properly so to re-stick the old rubber grommet and then of course as I mentioned the inlet and outlet pipes were the wrong way around and I didn't get it on film but um, the slightly enlarged ends of the inlet and outlet pipes were slightly enlarged too much and I, we couldn't get the rubber hose of the car over them so we had to cut the rubber hose slightly short and put some larger hose sleeve over both of them to join them and then they've been flipped on the device as well so having connected the measurement works so we had to take it all out and uh, it was one thing after another this car is it's, it's a thing that's sent to try me and it's now trying Jamie as well who's um, adding it to his list of, of painful pains the good news is it's all done we've now got a very good very functioning Alfa Romeo which looks good sounds amazing and it's nice to be in uh, I think actually this might be the first time well this since I've now passed the MOT in it this will be the first time that I'm actually driving it and able to listen to the uh, CarPlay head unit that I've had installed I, I say I had installed I installed um, a little while ago wow this car is a troubled beast let's just put it that way So now I am in the rather happy position that everything in my fleet that, that runs is now MOT'd and legal. It's just a matter of taxing or untaxing to take it on and off the road. The only things that don't run are the, well, the projects, the uh, W123 and the 2P6s. Everything else is it's road legal. This is unprecedented. And it's like nine cars that are all MOT'd at the moment. Now under my uh, MOT test, I seem to be driving a new Lamborghini this week. But now this car is back on the road, I can start in driving it and paying attention to what's still broken, what still needs to be done. And there are various things I do need to be doing to it before too long. The air conditioning, we did the condenser, we did the regas, still doesn't work. So we need to investigate that, figure out what's up with that one. The, uh, what else is wrong? The suspension feels a little bit tired. It's okay, it drives fine, but it doesn't feel as good as I think it could do. So it certainly would appreciate a refresh and the car would look better, just not that much lower. That much lower would look really good. As with all 1990s hot hatches, the brakes aren't really all that compared to modern brakes. So a bit of a brake upgrade in terms of discs and pads would not go amiss at all. And the clutch on this car is, well, not special. It kind of only works at the top of the travel, so a new clutch will be in order before too long. And I know that's not a cheap job, so I'm dreading having to pay for that one when it comes. But that aside, this is a great looking car. Although when it was on the ramp, I did notice once again that doink on the front passenger wing, the little bubbles of rust that just started on the driver's wing, which I noticed last time I was on the ramp, and a couple other little marks as well. So, so I'm gonna have to spring for some body shop attention before too long as well. It never rains, but it pours. So that's like nine cars all on paint doing as well. Ugh, I need to learn to paint. Anyway, at least I can enjoy the the raspy exhaust note for the time being, which is a good thing. So that's brilliant news. I'm now in the really unusual position of not only having most of my cars running and MOT'd and a lot of them taxed as well, but I seem to be acquiring an awful lot of rather rare and unusual 1990s hot hatches. We've got the 200 VI, we've got the Alfa obviously, we've got the Tomcat, and we've got the Mini Cooper. These are all cars that are within a couple of years of each other and fulfill a very similar function. Anyone with any sense might be thinking right now, maybe I ought to start uh, shrinking down and reconciling the fleet, because I've also got three big saloons. We've got the Volvo 740, the Mercedes W123, and the Ford Crown Victoria. Again, three slightly similar cars. Maybe instead of getting rid of some cars, I should be doing some comparison videos. That sounds like a better idea. 
watch this space. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this one. Well, next time, I don't know what we'll be doing. Taking one of these cars or the Crown Vic or something else up to Yorkshire to the motorist on Saturday. If you haven't got a ticket to the Furious Driving Cars and Coffee social event up at the motorist on this Saturday, the 28th of May 2022, then do please hit the link in the description below. Grab yourself a ticket and come and say hello and find out then what I've managed to get all the way from Kent to Yorkshire. In the meantime, this needs some earth searching to figure out why various things aren't working. This needs to ignore all the problems until I find some money to fix them and everything else just needs fixing in general. But while I'm waiting to fix them, I'm going to keep on enjoying them and hitting the road and driving them. So thank you for watching and see you again soon.